morning. So, like I usually do, I'm going to recap like the previous classes we had. Uh, the first couple classes we just did a couple of weeks ago and last week are for generating leads. So we did real estate marketing 101 and then social media marketing. And that's what's supposed to help you generate leads for your business, right? So now that you started marketing and you, you can finally get a call from someone to help them find the property. So this is what the next class is about, teaching you how to use the MLS to find the right property for your client. So the first thing we're gonna go, we're gonna do is go to crmls.org. And it takes you to this page here. And when you go to crmls.org, you're gonna click on this blue button that says MLS dashboard login. So excuse the, the extra steps. I'm, I'm just going through as if you guys didn't know anything about the MLS, right? To start off. So in case somebody sees this, yeah. <laughs> You should already have your MLS login information from uh, OCARD. So go ahead and log in. And then you're going to get to this page, this dashboard page. Um, the one that we're going to use for this class is Matrix. There's other tools here, but we're, we're going into the MLS and we're going to click on Matrix. Good morning. Come on in. Perfect timing. We, we just logged into the MLS. So the first thing that I want you guys to look at when you log into the MLS is to make sure that your contact information is correct. So you want to go into roster, agent roster. This is a recording too. Yeah, I'm listening. To yeah, and you can do it yourself while we're while we're teaching it. And you're going to enter your MLS ID. I'm going to type in mine. And I'm going to go down to the bottom. Let me move this thing down there. Let's get this to the show. I'm going to click on results. It's going to show me. And if I didn't, if I wasn't happy with this contact information, or maybe my phone number changed or email changed, I'm going to click on this little pencil to edit. And then when I get to this page, I'm going to click on change contact information. And I'm going to change my phone number to whatever it's going to be, uh, my email address to whatever I want it to be, and my website to whatever I want it to be. And, and you can even add member designations. I don't, I don't think I added anything on here. And then once you're happy with it, you can click on submit member, and it'll update your contact information for anyone that tries to find you in MLS, but also um, your preferred contact method. So here, the first method I want people to contact me is cell phone and then email. So those two things are gonna show up when other agents look for me. <clears throat> so I'm happy with my contact information here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on submit member. That's gonna make the change. If I wanted to add or change the photo, you can click here. And then you can select a picture and upload it. You guys saw it has my picture on there, right? So now let's go to, let me just go to home. Another place that you want to go to customize with your contact information is click on hello, whatever your name is up here. Hello, Carlos. Click on settings and my information right here on the left. Make sure that this information is correct. I know that when you first sign up with the MLS, the MLS uh, shows our office as Coldwell Banker Platinum Prop. So go in and fill out the rest of it. So it says properties. And then anything you check mark here is what's going to show up. Um, so where? On your profile. So the website. Huh? Where is it? So up. What website? You say you're so, you can check mark so up and so where? Right here on the right. I mean, you could check mine, so up, where, where, so up. It'll show up, and I'll show you in a second. Oh. So make sure that all the information is correct here. So under here, title of employment, you're going to say realtor, phone number, uh, brokerage, address, your website. Actually, i got to change this because I think I didn't renew that domain. <laughs> 
So I'll use my other domain. And I'm going to save. Um, another thing you want to do is go to uh, header and footer. And then, so this tells you where this is going to show up. Use this page to customize your personal head, header uh, displayed on your print display. So when you're sending out your, uh, your listings or, or uh, printing out your print displays with listing information, it's going to have this information on there. And you can select what type of header you want to use. This is just what I have uh, selected here. But as you see, it's got my picture, name, phone number, email, website, DRE license number. I can change the photo here, select a different banner image theme. So if I want to change the look of this, this is just kind of gray and plain. I can click there and I can select a different color, different theme. Oh, yeah, but I'm just plain, so I'm going to leave it plain. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see, how do I get back here? Cancel. I don't want to change it. Okay. And this is going to show up on, on emails that you sent out or on printouts. Let's scroll down here just so you can see what else is here. You can change the colors. Like if I wanted to change that gray to something else, change this to uh, light blue. And Done. And now you'll notice that at the top it's oh, I didn't change it to light blue. And our oh, background color. Hmm. That's weird. Maybe I can save it. Didn't change it. Okay. So I wonder if it's this here. This blue bar, because that's what color I changed it to. Oh. Okay, so I guess it is. All right. Um, CMA cover, cover sheet. So the MLS has their own version of a CMA, and they have their own CMA cover sheet. So this is the information that will show up on your cover sheet. Make sure you update that. Email signature, if you're going to send any emails through the MLS, you can add your signature here. I'll update it since I'm here. And then OC Home, this, uh, sorry, One Home. This is, uh, I guess, the picture that's going to show up on <clears throat> your portal when you send out like automatic emails and your clients click on the link to see the, the, the listings that you sent them. Your picture is going to show up on top. So now that we're happy with all this, now we're going to go back to home and the customization is done for right now. Um, let's get into how to just do just a basic search. <laughs> So you're more likely going to do, let's just talk about uh, uh, homes for sale right now. So we're going to go to search, residential, and detail. You can do quick, you can do whatever, but I'm just going to go to detail. And within the detail page, there's just a few things that you have to answer. Because the more detailed you get and drill down to the search, the less results you're going to get. So I like to search broad first, right? So we're looking for anything that's active. And in this case, my buyer wants a single family residence and they want uh, detached. So I'm going to keep going, scrolling down. And here it says attached. You want the property attached? No. I don't know why they don't just, do you want attached or detached, right? So some people will get confused by this. Property attached? No. Okay. So for this column, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty, pretty much done with it. So now I'm going to go to the mid middle column here. And in the middle column, what county? Orange County. Unless you know a specific zip code that they want to live in, then you just type in the zip code and you don't have to do anything else in this middle column. But they want uh, they want a house in, in Orange County. And if you don't enter a county here, it's going to show a list of all the cities in the MLS, right? But if you enter a county, it'll only show you cities within that county. So let's say, let's say we want to look at everyone. You can select it from the list or type it in. And within Irvine, let's say, let's just say they want to look for anything in Irvine. They don't care where. We're just, this is broad. And their price limit is 1.5. So we're going to do 1,500,000 minus. 
That means anything this price or less. You can also do a million five hundred thousand to a million seven fifty, and that'll give you anything within that range only. So in this case, we're just going to see anything below a million five. Or you can do the plus sign. And plus will say a million five plus, anything above that. <clears throat> and they're looking for three bedrooms plus. You could just leave three bedrooms and it'll only show you results for three bedrooms. But if you do three plus, it'll show you anything with three bedrooms plus. And when I do a search for, for properties, I don't enter, I never enter the bathrooms unless they really specific about the bathrooms. But um, sometimes agents don't enter the information correctly when they're entering the listing because you have a quarter bath, a half bath, three quarters bath, and a full bath. So I just leave that blank and then just look through the list. So in this case, we have seven, seven matches. Um, square footage, I'm going to leave it alone. They don't care about your build. But these are the different options you have, even lot size, things like that. But I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> I just want to look at the results. So I can click on results. And it shows me a list of homes and the pricing. So here we have um, listing ID is the MLS ID for that listing. Status is active. Subtype single family detached. And then street number, street name, city, area, area. This is Northwood. This is, uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, I forgot what that one is. This El is Camino, El, right? El Camino, and this is Walnut, and so forth, right? And then what type of sale? This is a standard sale. This is a standard trust sale. And then this is the list price. Next column is uh, price per square foot. Next column is bedrooms and baths. Uh, and then square footage. And then where the source comes from for the square footage. Uh, let's see, year built, and then the source for the year built information, the lot square footage, and the uh, square footage, and uh, and and uh, got acreage. So in acreage uh, uh, measurement and by square footage, and then the next column is days on market, and then slash cumulative days on market, and all of these actually they're not all the same. The difference between days on market and cumulative days on market is days on market is um, going back to the current listing contract with, with an agent, right? Or with a brokerage. Cumulative, cumulative days on, on market is, let's say the listing was on the market for three months, say 90 days, and then it expired and you have a new listing contract with somebody else and it went back on the market. So now after day one, it's gonna say, 91 cumulative days on the market, but one day on the market with a new contract. So that's what that is. So if you see something like that, where it's like 100, it's like one day on market, but it's like 356 cumulative days, it's probably something wrong with that property because it's on the market for that long. So you have to you know, make sure that you do your due diligence. But the CDOM, the mean is maybe somebody take out. They could have listed it three, four, five times with it. So it resets after it's off the market for 90 days. So when the property is off the market for 90 days, it resets to zero. So when you list it again, it's one in one, one slash one. Is that just for contract or like, is it if it's in contract and the price changes, does it reset or is it only when the contract ends and then you, you, uh... when it either expires or cancels, mm -hmm. that's when the contract ends gotcha. or that's when uh, uh, the, the days on market end. And then when you have a new contract, they begin again. But again, it resets days on market after 90 days. So they probably canceled their contract after 23 days when they started. Again. Maybe, maybe. But, but let, let me show you something else here. So if you click on, on any of these numbers here, it'll show you the history of any changes they made. So let's see. Let's see if there's anything here that they did differently. So here they went from active to pending on this date. And then they went back from pending to active. Mm -hmm. It fell out of escrow on this date. And then it went back to, to pending on this date. And then it fell out from pending to active on that date. And then again, it went into escrow on this date. The C says active here, pending here. And then it went back to active on this date. And then it looks like they canceled the listing. 
So this is their agent, the MLS ID for the agent they used. And then this up here, it looks like they used a new agent for the new listing. So I didn't see what you clicked to actually get to that page from. <clears throat> okay, so I just clicked on the days on market. So I oh, think okay. it was, which one did I, it was this one, right? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. So interesting, right? It shows you a history of what went on. Okay, uh, and then uh, none of this stuff is really important. It just tells you this pictures, but so let's go back over here. Uh, if I wanted to see one of these properties, like the full full printout, I can click on the MLS ID, and then it shows me everything about the information. So not just the summary. So here we have uh, the address, the status, the price, the picture. You can either scroll to look through the pictures. If you want to make this bigger, click on the picture and scroll through the pictures, right? Um, here's the map of where it's located. You can click on the map and it'll, you can zoom into it and show you exactly what it is. Zoom so in, you can even do the satellite view, right? Um, and then all the information you saw on, this, uh, on the one-liner is all there. Uh, the parcel number, uh, let's see. These are the open house dates right here under the pictures. And then the description, and then more information about the listing. Let's keep going down. Here's the HOA information. This is how much it is monthly for HOA and the name of the HOA and the phone number. And then HOA amenities. Keep scrolling down. Um, you're gonna see school districts. Some, some agents enter this information, some don't, like as far as where the elementary school, middle school and high school are. That's very helpful. Sometimes they're wrong, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't just depend on that. Uh, private remarks, do not use showing time. This is information that only realtors are gonna see. Showing instructions, make sure that before you show anything or call about any showings, you read the showing instructions. Some of them might say, just go direct. Someone might say, schedule using showing time, which is this. You click on that and you schedule whatever opening is available. Some might say, text the listing agent uh, with desired time uh, and wait for approval or confirmation. So there's gonna be different ways. Um, so you cannot show a property without the agent's approval. Make sure you read the instructions. And then if you scroll a little bit lower, a little, a little bit down more here, we're gonna see where the listing agent is. This is the listing agent. This is the, the, the broker she belongs to. Uh, there's her phone number and her email address. Any questions on this? So let's say you want to look at a little bit more information about this property. You can click on the parcel number and it'll take you to the tax information. <clears throat> from a realist. So here, this is the owner's name, owner one, owner two. This is a mailing address, so they actually live in the property. Some of them, when you see a different mailing address, that means it's probably a rental, and this is their true uh, residence there. We look at the history of it, so let's go down and look at, you know, when they bought it and so forth, and. here and it goes back to however far back it goes to 2004 um, but just some information if you guys want to want to use that uh, let me go back okay, just close out this window all right so now let's say I want to look at all of the results, instead of looking at the results as one line, where are they located on the map? I can just click on map. It's gonna show me where they're located. I can change back to map view. And then now let's say the buyer said, you know what, I wanna, I wanna live closer to the, the freeway. Um, but all these are pretty close to the freeway. Um, let's say, I, want, I, I just want you to show me at homes um, south of Culver Street. So then we can just we can just do this. We can say, hey, let's only show me. I selected this polygon tool. 
And I'm going to click here and then click here, click, click, and click from the results, right? And now it's only going to show me those properties. And if I wanted to, I can email those to my client. I know it's beginning where you start. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let me let me clear that. If I wanted to do a circle and say, "Hey, I want everything in here, just on this side of the freeway," you can do that. Or if you want to do a square, you can use the square and say only these. But the polygon tool allows you to make a more custom selection, right? So maybe I just wanted everything on this side of the five freeway. Then I'm only going to send them back. So this is another way that you can, uh, I guess, customize it a little bit more. Um, so let's say this is the search that I want to make. And my client wants me to send them uh, automatic emails or set them up on automatic emails. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on save. What I'm saving is the search parameters, the criteria, the under a million five, the three bedrooms, the city of Irvine, the single family detached. That's what I'm saving. I'm not saving the actual search. So if I'm going to set them up on an automatic email, I'm going to click on save and I'm going to say, click on new auto email. And you have to create the contact. So you're going to click create and you're going to enter just whatever's in yellow, first name, last name, email address. I have uh, some myself in here, so I'll add myself to there. And it looks like it defaults to CC you a copy, which you want to see a copy of what's going on. And the subject line, you could type in um, homes for sale um, west of five freeway in Irvine whatever it's disregard the misspelling i'm just typing fast here um and then so what you want to do is you can select for uh, the default is send it out daily in the morning so every day you're going to receive something whether there's a change or not and your clients are going to get tired of that mm -hmm. so what i like to do is click on as soon as possible it sends them out one email at the beginning and then they have to click on the link and create an account and accept it and what this does is anytime there's a new listing, they're, they're going to get the first email with the, with the properties you're sending them, but then they're, they're only going to receive an email every time there's a new listing or something comes back on the market within the search criteria. So if something was an escrow and it comes back on the market, it's going to let your client know, hey, this is a, a property that's back on the market. So they're not going to get an email every single day, only when there's a change. So this is probably the best, best solution for that. And then you click on save, and then it's going to automatically send it out. Any questions on that? Okay. So now let's go back to the results. Uh, let's see. I want to see the results. And let's say you want to email these right now to your client, not set them up on an auto, auto email, just send them the results. You could say, I want to send all of these, or you could say, I want to send them these two listings. Whatever the case, whatever you select, you click on, let's go back to actions right here. Click on email. You're going to type in your client's name. Let's see. Jeez, dyslexic. <laughs> Client at gmail.com. Subject line, whatever it is. Uh, properties for sale. Irvine. Is that space button? Doesn't want to work. Okay. And then you can type a message, a personalized message. Hey, this is what I found west of the Fire Freeway. Let me know if you want to see any of these properties. I'm, I'm available on Saturday or whatever it is, right? And then you hit send. And then now your client's going to get that one email with those properties that you're going to click. They're going to click on the link and see those properties. Um, so that's the difference between just sending an email with properties in it and an auto email where they're going to just receive uh, properties anytime they come on the market. Any questions? Okay. God, you guys are pretty good. No questions at all. Um, let's, let's go back to search. So we're going to go to search residential and detail. I want everything that's active. 
and nine two six oh six. That's three bedrooms. I don't care the price, I just want that. And then I'm gonna click on the map and see. That's everything that's active. I didn't select single family, I didn't select condo, it's just everything, right? For sale. And then, or I can click on results, see the results. That's another way to search if they don't care where as long as you can put it. While we're here, let me talk about searching for, let me reset the search here. <clears throat> Let's say you wanna know how much homes you're selling for in a specific area. You're gonna look at the recent sales. So something you can do is you can look at closed sales. This is, you know, the last 180 days. And you can see in Orange County. And we're gonna say, we want to look in Irvine. And let's say we're gonna look in Woodbridge. Single family residence, excuse me. And we're looking for three bedroom homes. And actually let's look for detach. Okay. And this is just looking in all of Woodbridge. And I wanna look at the, the recent sales, but actually I also wanna look at the active and contracted pending. So what's in escrow and what was it priced at? So then I click on results. You guys understand what I'm doing here, right? Yeah. I'm looking at recent sales in a specific area. I click on results and it's gonna tell me what they sold for. This one is pending, P. So that one's not closed yet, but it looks like it's pretty close to price, price wise as the other ones, right? Uh, this kind of gives me an idea of what homes are selling for in the area. Where, which one pending? P. This oh, P is pending. Yeah. I see the. Yeah, so the S up here is for status. Oh, okay. So this is sold. A is for active. P is for pending. X, I think X is expired, and then K is canceled. Oh. Um. So and then it also gives you like average price per square foot. I mean, not average price per square foot, but just price per square foot uh, on there. And if you wanted to use these. Let's say I'm gonna select what is that arrow. That, that the red right, arrow. Thank right. you for asking. That means that it sold below asking price, or that it that the price there was a price reduction. For anything that's active, if you see the the red arrow down, that means that they dropped the price. So let's say I want to do an average price per square foot here. This isn't something that I teach in every class, but you guys are lucky because you're here, and I'm going to talk about it right now. So I'm I selected all of these, and they're all pretty similar. They're in the same neighborhood. Um, not the same track, so we're, we can drill down even further and get more precise, but just for the area. I'm going to click on, I think it's refine, and I'm going to do, I'm not going to do that, where was it here? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, let's do stats. I think that's the one. And then I'm gonna do tabular. That's what I'm looking for. So stats down here and then tabular. It's gonna show me what the average price was from all of these average days on market, average close price, uh, sell, sell price to list price percentage. Uh, these are all three bedrooms, so it's good. Average lot size, average, uh, and then average price per square foot right here. This is a good one. So maybe if you're going to submit an offer, you can base it on the average price per square foot. When your client asks you, what do you think I should offer? What do you want to offer? They can ask you. So a good way of doing it might be average price per square foot, or it can be whatever the last sale was and add like another, you know, another 20,000 to it or something. But these are different ways that you can get this information. Any questions on this? You understand what this is, guys? This is one house or many houses? I selected all that, all the sold homes, and this does an average. Can you come every... back and do one more time? Yes. yes. So I selected all the sold properties, uh -huh. not the pending, all yes. the sold. Yes. 
So it's comparing the price, square footage, the price per square foot, days on market, all that. So then I'm going to click on stats and then tabular. And then this is oh. the average, average sold oh. price. And then average days on market, this is pretty good. So if you're going to go on a listing presentation, you can say, hey, homes are sitting, they're sitting on the market for about 24 days, give or take a week or two, right? Thank you. All right. So this is this is very important. So I'm glad you guys were here for this. All right. So um, let's go to, oh, we already talked about uh, email and the search and then auto email. So if you want to send, if you want to do a search for lease properties, uh, properties in the market for rent, you're going to go to search, residential lease, detail. You're going to do the exact same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Leases are important to do when you're first starting up because you get to, you get to experience everything. Right? <laughs> you get to experience searching for property, talking to your clients, scheduling showings, submitting your application, uh, just the whole process, right? So it's good to learn because you're learning with minimal money instead of like your first time dealing with a client, they're buying a $1.2 million house and it's the biggest investment of their career and you don't know what you're doing, right? Yeah. How do I call the agent to ask for a showing? How do I, you know, email this? How do I go into zip forms? So leases are, are very good to build your confidence for when you're going through a real estate transaction. So I would recommend that if you, if you get an opportunity to do it, do it. It doesn't pay much, but you get the experience. So the same thing here, you're, you're looking for anything that's active. That's just, just to save time, 92606, instead of selecting county and Irvine and everything. And my client's looking for something that's uh, $4,000 or less per month. This is the... And they're looking for three bedrooms for lease. Oh, okay. So where are you open lease? It's Search, uh -huh. residential lease. Oh, okay. Detail. Detail. Oh, okay. So there's zero matches. So let's go up. They want $4,500 or less. Okay, so three matches. And I didn't select attached or detached or condo or whatever. This is single family detached, and then this is condo attached. So then we just look here. It's picture of the property, same thing. It shows you where it's located on the map. <clears throat> days on market, description. Where are the days market? Oh, okay. Is this well, we never use it. I wouldn't use that um, because it's going to take you into Glide, which is another program that has like what Zip Forms already offers, and we use Zip Forms. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Just more information about the property, listing agent, information at the bottom, showing instructions. This is a pretty long <coughs> instruction there. So any questions on that? No? Uh, I don't have a question. I have more, more comments. I've, I've done some searches for leases with other people who yeah. haven't come to anything. And with the new rules about there not being any compensation on there, I found that even when there was compensation, sometimes the one was like 25 bucks for the net. Yeah. I, I would just say that my point of view is really important before the agent find out the link for you. Otherwise, you can waste a shit ton of time. Well, not anymore because now you have a contract with the tenant. You can't show the property without having that contract signed where they're committed to pay you a commission. So it's oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't be wasting your time. I mean, they, they'd be obligated to pay you, but still, you still want to call the listing agent to see if they're offering a commission. With leases, if it's not run by a property management company, for the most part, because they're still offering two to two and a half. Just if they're run by a property management agency, they kind of on the flow ball. Okay, so no questions on that. Uh, let's say you want to look for open houses for the weekend. Maybe you're bored and you, you know, you just have nothing to do and you want to go look at homes. You click on search, click on open house. And let's say you want to look for open houses for this weekend. So from Saturday to Sunday. Right. Click OK. And then you want to look for open houses in Irvine. Oh, sorry. Or we're going to say Orange County. And then Irvine down here. It's 217 open houses. Let's see, public. Does that matter? Nope. Oh, it's 217 open houses. This weekend, <laughs> there's, if you just drive, there's like 
The corners are filled with signs. So I mean, if you click on results, you can see where they're located. Or if you click on the map, you can see where they're located on the map. Oh my God. I know. So can you can you check how many um, homes on the market or what? Okay, that's okay. We can do that. But let me let me show you yeah, this okay. first. So um, you can also find out who the agent is by clicking on agent two line, and then it tells you who the listing agent is. Here's the listing agent and then their office. So if you want to visit some of our open houses, you can scroll down and look for one of our agents if they're holding one and then visit them and yeah. Okay, so you want to look to see how many listings there are in Irvine. Uh, yeah, how many currently many okay. listings? Yeah. So are you gonna to go to residential detail? Uh -huh. You're gonna click on active. Uh -huh. Click on orange, uh -huh. orange. Or you can just type in Irvine without having to type in orange, right? Because it, it'll just take you to the city. Irvine. And then, oh, yeah, can you believe? 444. Now we can drill that down even, even further. We can say how many single family detached okay. are there in Irvine, right? So we're going to say, I only want to know how many single family detached in Irvine. And then how many? We don't care about that. How about how many condos are there in Irvine? 215. And then you can break it down to how many attached condos and how many detached condos. So you can always break it down that way. Um, let's see. If you're looking, again, we're going to go back to roster. If you're looking for another agent from another office that you are met somewhere or you want to contact, you go to agent roster, you're going to type in their name, first name, last name and then find them that way. Um, let's see, plus that's another way you can find out if they're in the MLS, right? Are they even active? Maybe they're, they have a, they're representing a buyer and they're not even members of the board. And this is a way to find out if they are or not. Um, if you have a new listing, you're gonna go to add edit at the top and click on add new. And then if it's a residential for sale, you're gonna click residential. If it's a lease, you're gonna click residential lease. If it's a duplex apartment complex, you're gonna say residential income or commercial, whatever it is, right? So in this example, we're gonna say it's a residential for sale property. And let me see, uh, let's select Orange County. I don't have the parcel number to one, so I'm just going to type in. Okay, anybody give me an address? Uh, let me try this one here. Hey, just out. That just popped up, so I'm just going to use that. And I'm going to click search. And then I'll say, oh yeah, that's the property I'm going to list. So I can click on fill. The APN number. Huh? Yes. And click on fill. And it's going to auto populate certain information about this listing into my listing. So we're going to bypass this. We're going to go to basics. This is where you're going to enter the list price and so forth, right? All the information. Everything that's in yellow is required. And then you're going to click on here, go to description, type out the description, click on features. You're going to go all the way through the end until you complete everything. And then you're going to, um, Go back here to status. When you're ready to go active, you're going to click on active and then submit listing. And it's, then you're going to have your listing live. And all the agents are going to see it. If you want to fill all this stuff out before, like two weeks before, because you have the listing, but you don't go live for two weeks, you can click on save as incomplete. And you can always go back to it and add changes and just work on it so that the day that you're going to go live, you just click on active and submit listing and it's live. You don't have to spend three hours trying to upload it or, you know, add everything to it. Because the first time you add a listing to the MLS, you're going to be sitting there for a very long time. So I recommend that if you have a listing, whether it's a lease or for sale, that you look up the MLS for the last time it was listed. Because it's going to have a lot of information about the property. Look up any of the properties that are for sale or for lease in that same, on the same street or the same tract. Because they're going to have information about the community. And then have the maybe the tax uh, uh, 
the realist tax report because it'll have a little more information about the property as well. You might need it, you might not. And then when you start answering or filling out or check checking the boxes on like features, you're going to have that to refer to. And if it's something you're not sure about, you mentioned you're going to call the owner and ask them, right? But you have that to refer to. And you're going to go through and answer, you know, what's the cooling system? Central air. Okay, cool. It's central air. Appliances, does it come with the double oven? You know, whatever. <laughs> and go down the list. So this takes a while. It doesn't take you three hours. But when, you, when you're new, it's going to take you that, at least that long to fill this out. And then you can add photos to it. So I'm still asking where you, where you have photos. Yeah, so then let's say I'm going to save as incomplete. Uh, save as incomplete one. Did it save it? I don't think it did. You can scroll the dog type like that. When you add, so once you save this, um, it takes you to another page where it says view the listing or upload photos. You can click on the upload photos link okay. or when, uh, go back, add edit. You're gonna have a drop down list come up right here, show up right underneath where it says MLS. Actually, it'll be here. And you're gonna select that listing and then it'll show you this again, but a little bit different. It'll say residential, that means you go in and modify the information. It'll say add photos. It'll say, uh, I think add virtual tour, or I don't know, whatever, but it'll, it'll, there'll be a link for you to add photos. <laughs> um, let's see, what, what other things can you use here then, Les? Uh, when you go to links over here on the right, links takes you to other MLSs, other tools that you can use provided by the MLS. Uh, a good one is Cloud CMA. So if you want to make a CMA, you would select, and we have a class on that, so I'm not going to get into that, but it creates a nice presentation of comparable market analysis um, with charts and pictures and, and all that good stuff to show the seller. Uh, E-Property Watch, that's pretty cool. I think this one is, um, you can set a homeowner up on this uh, E-Property Watch where it sends out an email to them like I think it's monthly or quarterly or something to let them know how much their home's worth based on what recently sold in the area. You don't have to do anything. It just sends it out, which is pretty cool. Um, another one you're going to probably use is pro Realtor Property Resource, which did I pass it up right here. And this one, uh, you can do similar reports. Um, uh, you can do a CMA, a neighborhood report. One cool thing that I like this for is you can see what the boundaries are for a specific school. So I know this is going off topic, topic from the MLS, but we have time. So we're looking for homes for sale, but I also want to, where is the filter? Let's see. Let me do a search here. Uh, let's do property search. Let's do map search. Why is it taking me <laughs> map search? Right and I'm looking at Irvine. I'll close out of that. And then there's filters over here. So I want to view, let's see, is it down here? Data layers, schools. I'm looking for public schools, right? And I want high schools only because my kid's in high school and I want, I want my kid to go to a specific school. So this is a school I want. And it shows me the area for where the school district and I guess the, uh, let's see here, hold on a second, did I do that right? Layers. So I'm thinking if I did that correctly, it's gonna show me the boundaries for that school. Let me see this one here. Let me 
me uncheck, let me uncheck this one. So we're all over by now. Search by California. And let's say I only want uh, create score report, create marketing tip report. Search it in this area. There you go. So this is the area for the school district for uh, for the school or the boundaries for it. Sometimes people come to Irvine for a specific school, and this is how you can do that. So that's pretty cool. Um, driving distance, I think you can do driving distance travel time. Enter an address, let's do the office here. And I want everything that's 10, 10 minutes away. So this whole area is 10 minutes, 10 minute drive. So if I have a client that says, I don't want to drive more than 10 minutes to work, show me everything that's within 10 minutes of this, of this location. This is pretty cool. So it's another way to search the MLS, but a little more filters. Learn something new today? I did. <laughs> I did. I don't recall this, this function at all, which is great. Yeah. And again, this is a realtor property resource. So when you're in the MLS, this is it right here. When you're gonna go to links, you go, let me backtrack a little bit. Links, and then scroll down to realtor property resource. But when you go to your home screen, there's already a few links on your home screen. And yours might look a little bit different than mine, but you can move these things around. So like, I wanna move this over here, or I wanna move it there, or over there, right? But there's an external link section and realtor property resource is already in this. So you can just go straight from the home screen. Oh, uh, cool, before I forget, another way to search for properties is if you have the address. So if somebody gave you the address, someone calls you up and says, hey, I want information on this property, you could just type in the address here. So on the top bar, it's only gonna show you properties that are for sale or have sold. So uh, let me do this. You don't wanna do the like place or avenue, it's just the street number and the street name and that's it. No north or south or avenue or so it's just that. It's going to show you anytime the property's been on the market and if it's active, it'll be on there. Okay. Now, this is only for sales or for sale. If you want to search something that's for lease, you're going to look for the property through here and it's going to show you the history of that property, anything in that property, right? So we're going to type it in here. Oops. Where are you beginning coming from the way? Wait, hold on a second. So now it's going to show me anything anytime it's been leased or sold. And if it's on the market for lease, it's it's going to be on here. Right? Here. Okay. Yeah, so you can search by address up here on the bar, huh. but it's only going to show you anything having to do with sales of that property. Okay. And if you type in the address over here on the sidebar, huh. only street number and street name, and that's it. Street number and street name. Yes, uh -huh. just like the top. Huh. It's going to show you anytime it's been leased or sold, or if it's on the market for lease or for sale. Lease, so yeah. Okay, so type here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you know the address. Another way you can do it is if you want to search, go to search residential <clears throat> detail, click on active, and then scroll down. And then you're going to get to location, you're going to type in the street number, and then you're going to type in the street name. Oops. And then you're going to do search, and then you can search this way, but it's a little bit longer than going through the, for the home page. Um, so the, you mean the back way, go to the street, right? Yes. So another thing you can do is if there's something here that you don't, like, a, like you want to narrow it down to something that's not on this, uh, it, the field is not here, 
does not exist of what you're looking for. You can always add more fields, additional fields down here. So like maybe I'm looking for something that uh, I have a VA buyer and homes that are accepting VA loans or something. Or I want to look for properties that are fixers. So I added this property condition and I'm looking for people that enter the word fixer into their listing. Or occupant type, I'm looking for only vacant properties, right? Um, so you're gonna click up here where it says additional fields. Click on add and remove. And these are all the additional fields you can add to it. To the search. Some of them are already in there, like you're built and things like that, right? But there's some that are not, and there's a lot that are in there. Um, yeah, but anyway, this is where you can you can customize that, add more fields to it. Um, there's okay, here's here's one. Let me go to uh, let's go to search residential detail. Maybe I have a farm area. And I want to look for all the activity in my farm area, anything that's active, that's coming on the market, um, anything that's active or a contract pending, closed in the last 30 days. And it's Irvine, sorry, Orange County. Yeah, Orange County. Let's say Irvine. Let's say Lisa Vieira or whatever. It's no. just, okay. okay. And let's drill down even more. Let's say it's in uh, this area right here. Drill down. Let's say just this area. Let's say that's where I farm. This is my market, my market area, I'm sorry. Um, and I click on results. I'm gonna click on save down here. I've outlined, I want Aliso Viejo in that particular area, anything that's active, pending, under contract, and sold in the last 30 days. And I'm, I'm gonna click on save. And I want this to be a new saved search. I'm gonna name this Aliso Viejo Farm. <laughs> I can save this so I can always go back to it and find it. But I'm also going to click on enable as a favorite search and click save. So instead of every day logging into it and, and having to do that same search to try to find that data, when I go to my home screen, look at that, at least we'll be able to farm. So I just click on that for my home screen. That's the same, right? I say, yeah. yeah. And then it just it shows me the information, right? It takes me straight there. Um, and then if I want to change that or delete it or whatever, I'm going to click on my matrix, save searches, and then either change it, update it, or I'm going to delete it, right? I don't want it anymore, so I'll delete it. But we can delete it too, okay. Yeah, but like these are searches that I have saved because I go in and search, you know, I want to know the information for these areas. So that's a way to do that. Um, another thing I wanted to show you guys was, let's see, oh, the exports. So let's say there's a, you know, you select an area and you have all the information that you want. Let's say I, I want to export these, these listings into a CS spreadsheet. I'm going to click on, move this thing up here, export button down here. After I selected everything I want to export, I click on export. And it's going to ask me, this is going to export the one line report. Or I could do the full report. Full report has every single column, which is like, everything, you know, things you don't need. Or you can create your own custom report. I have one that I have for market update. Uh, let's see. I have a multifamily. Where is there a market update? Let's see. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, that's the yeah. first one right there. You see that one? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna click export. And then let me show you what that report looks like. And maybe I want to use this for my marketing. So it shows me the list price or close price if it's closed. 
let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna export everything that closed, right? And say this is all that closed. Uh, let's close this. Here's all the information. I'm doing a market update and I, I pulled up everything that closed in the recent, uh, let's say the last month. It's gonna show me the address, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, uh, list price, sold price, and then maybe sold date. So when I send out my market update, it's gonna have this information. And I don't have to type everything in one at a time. I can just copy this and paste it into my flyer. So this is pretty cool. And then if you're interested in learning how to do this, then you're going to you're going to uh, this out of the way again. Things in the way. Click up here. Click on settings. Click on uh, custom exports. And then you're going to make your own. Say I want to add a new export. And these are the fields that I want to show up on. I want uh, property address uh, number, street, uh, sold price, number of bedrooms, number of baths, and that's all I want. So now when you save that report, it's gonna show up on your drop-down menu to export, and then you export that data, which is pretty cool. Another thing you can do here is, um, let's say you want to create a custom uh, display. So a display is, this is a display, whatever you see here. But this is a lot of information. I don't wanna see all this stuff, right? I made a custom display for myself because I have to keep track of more office inventory. So I call it, Listing contract eight, and this is the information it shows me. This is all I care about. I want to know what act, what listings we have, what's the address, who's the agent, how many days on market, what's the list price, and when was it listed. So I created this display because that's the only information I want to see. But let's say you just want to see, you know, the address and the price. You can make a custom display to show you that information. Remember, the display and the export are two different things. You have to customize your display to see what you want, and then you have to customize your export to export the data you want. It's probably more than what you guys want to learn, but you know, just know that it's available if you guys want to do that. And if you want me to sit down with you and, and help you with it, we can schedule a time for that. But I think we pretty much covered a lot. I just want to know in your safe searches what fuzz it was. Oh, it's a it's a <laughs> it's because there is a um, I named it that because the, the program is going into, um, I think it, I correlated, I, I named it because of the program it's going into or something. And uh, I needed AP numbers. So that that export has limited information, including the AP numbers, like how you were looking, was it, you were looking for, no, someone called me and Rima called me today, asked me, um, she needed uh, uh, to export data with just the, uh, not only, but including the AP numbers. So I showed her how to do an export. Mm -hmm. But in her case, she had to do a full export to get the AP numbers. And the full export contains so many columns of data. When, if, you, if you're going to do that a lot, you're going to create a custom export that includes the AP numbers and the address. And then just that information. So that's what that is. What, what did you think it was? I didn't want to say that one. <laughs> OK. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, I have to go, but a lot of people, you're already getting ready to yeah. 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 So remember, I'm going to send out the recording if you guys want to watch this later. And it's also going to be on our YouTube channel yeah. um, that, where we upload all these recordings. Um, but I guess I guess that's it. But there was a lot, lot of information, right? A lot of information. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. as you said earlier, the new stuff that I haven't seen. Yeah, so. yeah me too. That's why, that's why it's cool to show up to classes, yeah. even if you've attended them because, yeah. before, because yeah. there's more information. Or sometimes I'll forget to add something, or sometimes I'll remember to add something, or something changed. But okay, so I will let you guys get on with your day here. It's been, thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, reach out. Let me close out of this thing here. Hey, Harriet.